right, good afternoon, everyone. Are we good to go? All right. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for coming. We just wanted to provide some further information to you uh, the circumstances surrounding the shooting of a 50 year old man at about 2.35 this morning at a unit complex at Denison Street at Capalabar. Now, police were called to that address as a result of a call about a disturbance. That call came from other occupants of the unit block. Two female officers from Capalabar station attended the call. They spoke to the suspect who uh, retreated to his unit. He shortly thereafter re-emerged from the unit armed with a number of long uh, knives. Initially, those knives were pointed towards himself in some sort of a self-harming stance, but he then changed the direction of those knives towards the police officers and began to rapidly advance on those officers. The officers were forced into a tactical withdrawal. Whilst they were withdrawing in the courtyard of the unit complex, they repeatedly called on the man to drop the weapons. When the, uh, the man advanced to within two metres of the police, one of the officers fired a single shot which hit the offender in the groin. The suspect is under guard, police guard in hospital and his injuries are not considered life threatening. Use of potentially lethal use of force by police is a very serious matter and is being independently investigated by the Ethical Standards Command. Those investigations have included interviews with a number of independent witnesses who corroborate the circumstances as I have outlined them to you here. These two officers acted in response to an imminent threat of death or serious injury. Although investigations are ongoing, we are satisfied that they acted professionally in accordance with their training and as authorised by law. And I'm happy to take any questions. Sure. He was actually shot in the groin, but the bullet then travelled down his leg and exited at his knee. How is the man in hospital at the moment? Uh, so his injuries are not life-threatening. He's obviously under guard in hospital? Yes, he's under police guard and will be interviewed uh, about all of the circumstances when he's well enough. What was the nature of the disturbance? Was it a domestic disturbance in his unit? It was just a general disturbance uh, in his unit block. Police had actually been called to the same unit block on a couple of occasions previously in relation to disturbances earlier in the night. They hadn't been able to speak to anyone, anyone on those previous occasions, but on this occasion they spoke to the suspect uh, outside his unit. Well, was it specifically when they were there for or what? Uh, well, the circumstances around the actual disturbance are subject to ongoing investigation. Yep, both of the officers had a taser, but uh, as they are trained to do in a situation where death or serious injury is imminent, our officers are trained that one officer will uh, provide a lethal use of force option while the other officer will provide a non-lethal option, i.e. the taser. On this occasion, the man's advance on the police was so quick that he got inside a distance when the use of a taser could be safe and effective for police and they had no option other than to use a firearm. Uh, we're told he had uh, three knives in each hand and that the knives were about 30 centimetres in length, so he presented a very significant threat to those officers. Would you say they must have escaped their lives? Absolutely. If they hadn't taken the action that they were forced to take, uh, it is no doubt that one of those officers would have been stabbed or killed. We train our officers that uh, a dangerous distance from someone who has an edge weapon is inside of a seven metre perimeter. This, off this uh, individual got to within two metres, so I think these officers showed commendable restraint in not firing until uh, he was almost upon them. How are the officers today? Well, the officers are obviously subject of the uh, investigation process and ethical standards command. Uh, that's quite demanding. They are getting all the support from the human services officer and from senior officers 
uh, in the region. As you'd appreciate, uh, a life and death situation like this and having to shoot somebody is a very traumatic experience. No police officer wants to do that, but it was forced upon them. So obviously it's traumatic and there'll be probably some after effects for both officers. Yes, they were both from Kapalabar Station. The officer uh, who fired the shot has about three years' service and the other officer has uh, just over 12 months' service. Do we know if he was affected by drugs or alcohol? Uh, not at this time, no. The usual procedure is shoot the police. Beg your pardon? The usual procedure is shoot the police in a situation like that. We train our people that if they are in a situation where death or serious injury is imminent, they have a range of use of force options open to them, including a firearm, taser, OC spray, whatever. If it gets to the stage where they are in fear of their life, we train them to use lethal force as authorised by law and in accordance with their training. That's what was done on this occasion. Do we know how many times the officers told him to put the weapons down before he fired, before they fired? Uh, all I can tell you is it was re repeatedly and that's verified by uh, a number of independent witnesses who witnessed the event. They fully support the police uh, version of what occurred. Uh, we were told that uh, police took up to an hour to arrive at the scene after receiving a call for help being put down. Uh, from the police? Yeah. So, so they received a call uh, that said it was harming them an hour later the police showed up. Uh, so There was, there was certainly no delay in any triple O call. As I said, there were uh, calls to that unit complex earlier in the night, which police did attend to, but were unable to find the cause of the disturbance. When they returned on this occasion, it was a routine response, code three. Uh, obviously, after the shooting, there was an immediate uh, additional police response, but there was no delay, there was no triple O call, which went unanswered. Well, that would probably be the in response to the ongoing disturbance calls of the unit. As you can appreciate, uh, on a busy Friday night, um, resources are stretched and uh, priority uh, is given to various uh, jobs as they come in. This job was given a priority code three, which is not urgent and was responded to in that fashion. Yeah, no, they did attend the unit block earlier in the evening in, in relation to a disturbance call, but uh, they couldn't find uh, anyone who was causing a disturbance, so they left and, and went about other duties. Was this man known to police? Yes, he was. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yes, um, the officer was uh, attending to an unrelated inquiry in a cul-de-sac. He saw a vehicle there that he wanted to speak to. He uh, motioned for that vehicle to stop. Uh, the driver of that vehicle drove at the officer, hit that officer and knocked him to the ground and drove away from the scene. Uh, that officer has been uh, treated at hospital and released for concussion and bruising and uh, a 17-year-old male person is presently being interviewed by police. Why did he want to? Yeah. Uh, I don't have that information. And the officer's okay now? Uh, yes, he's, uh, I spoke with his wife earlier. Um, he's suffering some headaches and concussion, but uh, we expect that he'll make a full recovery in due course. What suburb is he in? Uh, Labrador. Labrador. Yeah. Was he in a, um, working alone at the time? Uh, I don't have that information, I'm sorry. Yes, there was a, uh, a stabbing of a lady at a house at Palm Island. Um, she was deceased when police arrived and a male person from that house is being interviewed by police. What's the relationship between the two? Uh, I can't go into that at this point. Uh, we don't. Um, given that he wasn't located until several hours later, um, any breath testing wouldn't be definitive. Uh, 
but uh, there's no indication that alcohol or drugs were necessarily involved, but he's presently being interviewed, so I really can't assist you any further with the circumstances at the moment. Okay, and where was the driver actually struck? Where was the officer struck? Yeah, he was knocked over. Yeah, he was hit in, hit in the hip, as I understand, and then knocked to the footpath. Anything else? Yes, there were. There was a uh, young officer who was um, struck in the face uh, by an offender and another officer was injured going to his aid. Again, uh, the offender in that case has been interviewed and arrested. Busy night. Okay.